Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a steel MS280 chainsaw. Customer walked in a door with it in one hand and a brand new ignition module in the other hand. And he said, hey, can you put this in here for me? Now we don't have a problem doing that as long as we write up the work order in such a way that Pripes. all liability for diagnosis is put on the customer. If he wants us to perform some labor for him and install the ignition module, we'll do that. If it doesn't run after the fact, that's on him. So he was fine with that. I'm fine with that. Here we are. We have removed the ign uh, what do we remove? We removed the starter assembly so far. And now the top cover's coming off of it. We have to do that because the plug wire, the boot, won't fit through, pass between the cover and the cylinder without taking this apart. Spark plug comes out so we can pull the cover. Let's go! And there we have it. So now we have full access to the ignition module. Now, I don't know how he came to the conclusion that he needed a module, and I guess I don't really care at this point, but if you are going to test your machine that doesn't have any spark, one of the things you're going to want to do is pull the wire off the coil here and then try it again. That will determine if the kill switch wiring circuit uh, is the fault for you not having spark you know if you if that wire is grounded out somewhere or there's a problem with the switch you know you want to eliminate those possibilities before you spend the money on one of these ignition modules another thing you want to check is the ground between the ignition module and the engine you can do that with an ohm meter. If you don't have an ohm meter, you can just clean the connection between the module and the case. The back side of the module are bolts to the cylinder. Make sure it's clean and shiny. Make sure the posts on the cylinder are clean and shiny where it mounts. Make sure the screws you're using aren't all rusty. If you've done all that, uh, you can be pretty much assured that you have a decent ground if you still don't have spark, then go ahead and spend the money on a module. Now all of this is said assuming that it's a modern right. day piece of equipment oh, that doesn't run something. points. That's a whole other animal that uh, we really don't have to get into a whole lot these days. So all this fumbling around that you see right now, it's just me making sure that the wires are routed in the best way. We don't want any uh, rubbing or chafing. You don't want the wires getting caught in the flywheel. The factory spent a little bit of time figuring out where to put them wires. Why not put them back where they belong, right? What's this guy looking for now? Dandy dandy screwdriver. We're gonna pop this off of here and reroute it a little bit. There we go. So now we're gonna want to take uh, this is our official Husqvarna business card. It's uh, I think a 0.3 millimeter gap gauge. You can use a standard business card if you don't have your, a fancy tool or measuring gauge. That'll get you close enough to run the equipment anyway. And in fact, a lot of professionals, at least YouTube professionals, just use a standard business card. That's fine. So we have our module bolted on. We have our armature air gap, flywheel gap, whatever you want to call it, the gap between the magnets on the flywheel and the ignition module. 
it's set. Our spark plug wire looks like it's going to be long enough to make it to the spark plug. Pretty short wire. We get the starter bolted back on. Now, depending on what equipment you're running, if it's fixing a chainsaw, a lot of times the chain brake handle is somehow incorporated into the starter assembly. Or maybe it's just in the way of the starter assembly. Whatever the case may be, make sure that you use all the same bushings and spacers and washers. You don't want uh, a chain brake failure just because you lost a bushing or something like that. <clears throat> so now putting this top cover on here, you'll notice that That's right, it just doesn't feel right. I think I got the plug wire pinched between the cover and the cylinder head. And you don't want that. I mean, that's just going to create problems. You just spent a bunch of money on an ignition module. Get the thing routed in there decent so you don't have uh, future problems. We'll thread this spark plug back in. We're not going to bother uh, checking for spark. We'll know if we got spark when we try to start it, right? So we'll get this uh, spark plug torqued down to spec here. Click. We'll get our air filter put back on here and our air filter cover. And then we'll just make a check and make sure there's bar oil and fuel in it. Once we've got that done, we'll give it a test run. See if she's going to work or not. So that's all I got for you on a steel MS280 ignition module swap. Thanks for watching. Later. Yeah, it is.